pay scale <laughs> in education, and I'm not even using it. Oh, we're on. Hey. Hi, guys. Hi. So it's Follow Up Friday, very first one of the year, 2020. Brian can see more clearly. You got you got to beat me to it. It's like 2020. <laughs> we have guests over for our first follow up. We have Taroy. He's a teacher in Cleveland, friend of my family, and loves the show. Thank you, Taroy. And he's been a part of overtime. You've commented in such an overtime, yes, right? Yes, oh yes. So he's on the other end of the camera. So. Oh yes. And his mom, Miss Wade, also a friend of the family. She's actually uh, one of. She loves Raina. She's a fan of my daughter. Yes. Raina loves. She got to live with Raina. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Raina gets to be queen at her house when we visit. So uh, we can't wait to hear what you guys have to say for follow up. And now, and now Mrs. Good. Wade was a an educator for 40, 60. 46 years. Mm -hmm. and, and a principal for how many? Uh, Twelve. Wow. What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Just ordering food to come deliver to the house. And, and you've been part of the Moody Radio family for many years, correct? Yes, I am. Do you know how many? Oh, maybe 20. 20 years. Praise the Lord. Thanks for being with us. And you actually forced your son to listen. And that's courage. Right. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's what moms do. She's strongly encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> but you got hooked. And you, you yes, now you're the one calling her and saying, Ma, you got to tune yes, in. Yes, I am. That's it cool. wakes me up every morning. So what did you guys think about the... Oh, wait. First, let me say hi to Deborah. Good morning, Deborah. Myrna is on time, Brian. I hassled her for enough weeks that she shows up on time. Myrna, now. she loves the show. She's a friend. Of, she's amazing. And she keeps him in check. Okay. Yeah, so can't wait to hear what Myrna has to say. But what did you guys think about the conversation this morning? It was great. I mean, uh, when I woke up this morning, I, I can relate. I can relate to what she was saying about there being 30 lines in the store, but only two of them are open. <laughs> what you know, are they and, doing? And, and it's frustrating. It really is. You know, especially at night. You know, because everybody wants to go to Walmart at 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. So you have this line that is 30 people deep and two lines are open. Sometimes there's one. Yeah. So it's very frustrating. Yeah. Because so if you're going that late, you're trying to get in and out. That's right. And it, it becomes a 45 minute to an hour trip yeah. to get some yogurt. So that was that was this morning when we talked about the text that, that came in yesterday when we talked about stores getting rid of clerks and so Brian gets very impatient and frustrated and even angry 90% this number came from him of the times he goes to stores and so a text came in saying Brian maybe it's not the stores maybe it's you and he actually thought about it all day you seem surprised by that you like that I set that up for you? <laughs> 90% <laughs> well no, it's true though like I, I I was talking to Troy about this and I feel like if you and I got together we could just fix it <laughs> it's right. like nobody there knows what to do, and I could fix this today, even though I know that's not true and it's more complicated than it looks. Uh, I, no, I, it's not. Right? To me, it's not. Get more people it is up here. It's complicated. <laughs> stop <laughs> stocking the shelf and check me out. <laughs> it's yeah. not complicated. And yet, I, that, that doesn't give me license mm -hmm. to be raging externally or internally. They can't hear the Toroy, so just make sure you speak loud because, yeah. I'm loud too. So I want to make sure he's heard. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to put this over here. But you said it's not that complicated, and um, yeah, it's not complicated in terms of stores figuring out lines. I but think they can figure this out after the conversation, though. You have folks who are stocking, and I understand that things need to be stocked, but there are other workers there. But for whatever reason, they're not. You know, I'm a little ignorant of how how it works, but they're not clocked in to do to ring out people. Their task is to do this or to do that. But if you have a line that's 30 deep, you know, 25 people, why can't they just come and just ring you out? I mean, to me, a lot of it is common sense to me. <laughs> that is common sense. I mean, it, it kind of go against, it goes against the whole thing about the customer is always right. Obviously, we, we must not be, because they don't act like it. But then you may not have anyone in the aisles uh, to assist you Hello. when needed. I think when I go to a place, especially like Walmart or Target, and I go there and I'm trying to find something, I don't know which aisle it's on, and you can't find anyone to help you. That's frustrating also. Very frustrating. So what do you say to that? You're complaining in the front because Brian's in the front. What if Brian was in the back? Would you be complaining in the back because you don't have See, help? See, Troy and I have so many ways, we have so many ways we can fix this. <laughs> the other way to fix it is don't create, when you're building the business, 26 checkout lines. Make two. Mm -hmm. And no one's going to complain when you only got two lines open. Yeah. 
Yes, but when you create so many, you're like dangling candy in front of the baby. They probably would, though. Because then still somebody, somebody would say, well, why do you only have two lines? <laughs> I mean, so it's something you can't make anybody, you can't make everybody happy. You right. know, it's just. Yeah. 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 And speaking of that, the self-serve, I really don't like to utilize them because I feel like I'm uh, taking a job away from someone. So I will stand in the line as opposed to going through the self-serve because that's what's happening now. Um, uh, we're taking jobs away by the um, by technology or the computers and so forth. Yeah. Well, Deborah says eliminating the cashiers does not get rid of the jobs. It enables them to be more productive elsewhere in the company. Plus, there will always need to be cashiers. What do you guys think about that? So, where my question is, where else are they productive in the company? In the back, helping. Well, now that would be nice. Okay. Yeah. But, but but we at all some know point that you do, people will lose jobs. Well, yeah, because we can see in so many industries where, while technology has enhanced things, made it more qu quick, maybe more reliable, th that at some point computers do replace jobs. Yeah. Look at the auto industry. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know, your husband works in it. That yeah. there are certain jobs that are gone that existed gone. thirty years ago yeah. mm -hmm. because of advances in technology. But I I think you're right that we'll have to find some sort of tipping point. Mm -hmm where we're going to choose inconvenience out of love of neighbor because there's at some point we people need to work they need to have jobs and i can go on, uh, uh, down another road with that and that is that i think we're getting so uh with technology that we're losing our interpersonal communica uh, communication skills yeah. and interacting with each other and personal relationships the texting and yes. the, all the other things when do we really actually communicate with each yeah. other personally and I think that that is important too. My mom brought that up in terms of technology and she's noticed like man back in the day which is like when you and I were teens so it wasn't that long ago people would like pick up the phone more now yes. with texting exactly. and mm -hmm. Facebook like that's not like a natural thing anymore you could go months without talking to someone that's even in your family you could just easily text in fact, people get frustrated when you call them. I know I do. Sometimes. <laughs> because I want the kid. No, no, no. I'm just saying, no, no, no. No. What I'm saying is there are moments, you know, where you'll tell somebody, I can't talk. Like, can you text? Mm -hmm. But my mom was just saying, when we have that convenience, then it makes it a thing where you're like, no, don't call me. Text me. Don't call. Text. And she's like, before when text wasn't around, that wasn't a thing. You would just call and just talk and say, okay, I'll call you in a little bit. And you would engage more. So I agree with see, what you're saying. We need to communicate. What are you, are you saying? That's well, no, me? but I mean, just for the sake of discussion, I'm more connected to my wife via text than I could ever be during the regular workday. I'm getting my job done, but she, she and I are able to communicate during the live radio show. Mm -hmm. Make sure the kids are okay. She obviously tells me she loves me every morning. I mean, why wouldn't mm -hmm. she? Things like that, but 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 do you, you see what I'm saying? Like, tell you she loves you in the morning, went before you leave. Well, I for mean, me, she's see, sleeping. Well, and we debate about this all the time. Um, about because, calling text. Uh, well, yeah, because her thing is that why can't it just wait? Just like you said, now it's convenient for her to call you and to say, uh, or to, to text you and yeah. say I love you, or to send a message. Me and my mom, we have to debate all the time because say, Mom, just text me or just do this. Well. See all this thing of technology, you know. Yeah. It, you know, it's like you know. She feels like sometimes that the, our discipline is not the way it should be because we don't, we can't wait. Everything is rush, 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 hurry, hurry, hurry. It has to be now. And I say, and that's true. But that's how the world is. Restaurants everywhere you go, church everywhere, people. The the minute a text comes, they have to stop. Yeah. And oh, they have to yes. look, and that's really not good. Yes. And there should be a time. Right. You should be able to eat dinner or eat a meal yes. or be in a conversation without uh interrupting to answer a text uh -huh. or to look yes. and to see who's texting. Or if e someone is even communicating with you and talking, then the text goes off and you interrupt your conversation. Yes to listen to the text and I, I just really think I agree that with that even um, after a few weeks ago I put my phone on do not disturb and then I just put accept if these people call or text. who gets to be on that list you're on that list <laughs> 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 and of course my husband my kids but 
um, we were talking as a family about that issue. That is so yeah. true. Like, you cannot be on call for everybody all the time. If I'm talking to my husband, I have to be able to put my phone aside and not be distracted. Because it's even like that saying, if, if I'm talking to you and somebody calls and shakes me, I can't say, wait, hold on, I'm talking to somebody. That's really what we're letting our phones do, is just jump into whatever you're doing. But there has to be a balance, and I think sometimes yeah. it depends on who it is. Like, yes. I don't know who's texting you yes. or you, okay? So, or like when me and my mother are having a conversation, she may say, well, why do you have, but it may be important. All she's seeing is that I'm responding to a text. You know, she doesn't know that how important, how urgent that text may be. That's yeah. right. You know, and I, I don't have time always to explain, I need to take this. You know, yeah. but she's just interpreting as, why can't it wait? But in all you honesty, know. when we really think about it, I would say about 75% of it isn't really urgent. Or we How have do you either, know? Or we have <laughs> either uh, trained our minds to think that things are urgent when they mm -hmm. really aren't. Deborah says, looking at a text and looking at it while with other people sends the message that the person you are with is not important. Rachel says, so true. Sarah has a thought for Brian. Here's a thought for Brian. In his book, Respectable Sins, Jerry Bridges challenges those of us who recognize impatience as a sin we tolerate or mm -hmm. embrace mm -hmm. to use things like those long lines at the store as training for learning to be more patient. He says that he specifically chooses the longest line and then allows God to work in his heart and on his attitude as he is waiting. I find the concept fascinating as I love a good challenge. God does work on us. When we submit training, you're gonna do that. That's <laughs> crazy. That's it's a hard uh, word, but 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 the whole concept of Jerry Bridges' book, Respectable Sins, is that we've not officially but unofficially created a list of things we find to be acceptable sins and not yeah, acceptable yeah. sins. So, like for example, mm -hmm. adultery, murder, unacceptable, uh, gossip, impatience. That's fine. It's not that bad. And and his point being that it's all bad. It's all bad. And we need to work on all of it. And so but that, that that's a hard word to hear that he would pick the longest line to oh, teach himself patience. Yes. I don't know that I could always do that, but I think I could use a little bit of that. A little, yeah. So going back, because we shifted to the texting conversation, Deborah says... But that but you know what? It's, it's connected, sorry. though. I'm sorry to jump in, but uh -huh. it's connected because what you're saying is that people aren't patient oh, yes. enough Thank you. to right. wait for a text message. It doesn't mm -hmm. always have to be read when it comes in. Exactly. Myrna says, wow, that is a great way to look at the lines. Marion says, my daughter and I have made a point to pick up the phone to talk unless the message is a quick, short note. We prefer to talk. Yeah, I like that. And it did convict me when my mom overall said, it wasn't personal. She was saying our society shifting to, we don't talk anymore. Mm -hmm. So I like that Marion is being intentional with her daughter and saying, no, like, pick up the phone. Are you good with that? To talk to people more than just texting overall? I think I do a balance. Oh, that's good. I, 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 I believe I do. That's now, good. some people may differ, but, and it also, it also depends on who it is, too. So, I think you, everything, and we talk about this a lot, life is about a balance. And so, I think you have to find a time or find a way to decide, well, what's important, what's not, and like you said about the phone, if you do see, if you don't have it on Do Not Disturb, and you can see who's texting you, you have to make that split second judgment. Is this something I have to respond to now or not? And more often than not, it probably is something that can wait. Yeah. But the thing about it is, there, now I do think there are times where it has to be, like you said, a do not disturb policy. Um, like what you said earlier about uh, some people feel like that there is being rude or you feel like you're not, um, how did you word it, about not having attention. Um, that it feels it, you're telling the person you're talking to that they're not important to you. Right. Somebody exactly. That exactly. Because yeah. that's a pet peeve of mine, honestly. If I'm out with somebody and they just continue to be on their phone, that is something that I feel like would can't that wait. Really? You know? Yes, really. <laughs> <laughs> but so there are there are times, you know. For As that. we're talking about impatience, Deborah is saying, where in the Bible does it indicate that impatience is a sin? And patience has some negative consequences for sure, and we see that in the Bible, and we do see it as a disobedience to God at times. And then she was like, maybe we could talk about it another time. But you read through Scripture about patience, and it, it didn't say it's a sin. It no, but it's a it, fruit of the Spirit. It, it says that patience is a fruit of the Spirit. So if you're displaying the opposite of the fruit yeah. of the Spirit... Is what? Is it? Wouldn't that know. be something you're not supposed to do, which therefore would be 
sinful. If yeah. it's in the Word, and it is one of the fruit of the Spirit, so therefore, if it is, it's part of the Word, and we are to be obedient to the Word. So if patience is part of the Word, then impatience would be, to me, not part of the Word. Yeah. 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 And and so it's not explicitly stated, but it's implicitly clear. Yeah. Is what you're saying, I think. Yeah. And I agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. There's so many things that are that way. We have absolutely zero instructions yeah. from the Bible about the internet and about technology. Mm-hmm. But we can draw clear conclusions about it based yeah. on the infra- principles control. and, and inferences yeah. in scripture. But I, I will say with some of the texting thing that part of this is extroverts trying to rule the world. Mm-hmm. Are you an extrovert or an introvert? I'm an extrovert. Are you? So, so you're recharged by groups, large groups. I, I, I don't have a problem with people. Okay. Now, I will say this: there are times when I'm, when I'm, when I'm done, I'm done. I can have yeah, my yeah, own yeah. space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like that. But for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm very outgoing. Okay. I, I wonder if you're an, an ambivert, which is like kind of that m- middle ground. And I, I, I don't know you well enough yeah. to know, but I can do groups. I'm inherently an introvert, and so my, my wife even more so. Mm-hmm. She prefers text message because she doesn't want a long drawn out conversation with somebody unless it's in a specific situation under specific circumstances. And I know you're the same way, even though you're an I extrovert. I am the same way for a, for a number of reasons because of my life and the kids and whatever. But I value what my mom says. I think even as an extrovert, when we don't keep that in check, you can go a long time not talking to people. And I think we need more human connection to constantly, let's not put my mother's have a special place, my sisters, to constantly text them and not pick up the phone and be like, hey, how are you doing? Mm-hmm. You can miss, like, your sister could be like, man, I'm struggling. The baby that hasn't been sleeping for a few, it could be something simple. And I think our society, and I'm including me, is shifting to that. And you're talking to an extrovert. You don't think, like, man, we do need to have more humans. Th- there need, Forget yeah. strangers. Our own families were texting. Yes, I, I think you're totally true on that, but that's why I lean more towards Troy's point of the balance. <coughs> I don't think we'll be better if we only talk interpersonally in person. I think we need to make sure that we don't lean too far in either direction. Right. right. Because the, the texting is... Like, the, the technology of texting is benign. It's neither good nor bad. No, yeah, yeah. What we do with it is good or bad. Mm-hmm. And it can become sinful. If you're being distracted by it, it's taking you away from relationships, it's consuming, it becomes rude. But there's times when it actually can be a quite a good thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not about the thing, it's about our balance of it. Right? That's, I think that was your right. point. And see, the world is in a constant state of change. And what we're talking about, we're talking about cell phones, but like what I remind my mother and others, is that think back there was a time when we just had the radio or we just had the TV now before those came along people were forced to interact more okay but all of a sudden when the radio came around people started sitting around the radio and listening to soap operas or whatever they call then when the TV came around people were doing that so that took away even though people were together watching TV it took away from that family time now we have other things that have replaced the TV and people now, we can't even sit down at the table now and eat dinner together anymore. Because everybody wants to go, and I've been guilty of it, Thanksgiving Day. We want to sit in front of the TV and watch the game while we're eating. Yeah. Instead of being around the table yeah. and, talking, and, to talking, and talking to your mother yeah. or, your, or whoever, you know, at the table. So, and we've kind of shifted to that, and it's become normal. But that's sort of the consequence of how, of how life ha- or how the world has changed. But that does not make uh, it... Um, uh, pos- a, a, a good thing, and it does not make it uh, something that we should a- accept as being um, the thing, the new uh, that it, that it should be that way. Yeah. Because sometimes it takes away from the values. Yeah. And and other things. There are some things, basics that they never change. Yeah. So Deborah says, in in terms of that. Uh, technology is here you can't change that and it has some great benefits but we have to decide how we will act with these things so I think it's it's what you're saying about it is here but learning as a Christian how do I use it to empower me and my relationships and not because if you don't it does steal away if you're just going about it mindfully Mm -hmm. I know I've seen that in my life Sarah is commenting this is her second time I wanted to she said this a few minutes ago Impatience is a sign that I consider myself, my needs, my wants more important than those of people around me. 
and True. Paul was clear mm -hmm. when he said, put others' needs above your own. <coughs> so, yeah, I like the way she explained that's, it. That's the day's meditation and the day in the Word. Is it? Oh, yeah, for today? Cool. Yes, for today. Oh. <laughs> Sarah goes on to say, please understand that I do not say that out of a, ju a judgmental heart when I share about respectable sins and impatience. It is because that is a chapter that most challenged and convicted me and is something I deal with every day. And I, you know what, Sarah, I don't think anyone took it that way. I'm glad you said that, though, because I, I, I had w one point in my life where I shared my testimony at, at an event, and it was me saying that I may not have the, I was a drug addict and a murderer and adulterer, but I certainly am equally as bad and exceedingly common ways, like super impatient, really prideful. And the point of the gospel is that I'm standing next to shoulder to shoulder at the foot of the cross with my impatience and pride, mm -hmm. the guy who killed somebody. Yeah. And if we both profess our faith in Christ and trust alone in him for our salvation, we're saved. And if one of us doesn't, we're not. Yeah. Which means that I, with my pride, could be in hell if I don't trust in Christ and yeah. the murderer could be. The point of the gospel is that nothing separates us from love, yeah. the love of God yeah. in Christ Jesus. And so that's why I think Sarah's point about respectable sins is so important because those are the ones that make us feel like we're okay. We go, at least we're not like that guy. Mm -hmm. And you just taught us on the radio a couple weeks ago about the Pharisees doing that. Oh, Lord, yes. at least I'm not like that tax collector. It was funny because when I was telling them about that, my kids, when we were reading it, they were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that, all that. And then we read on and we read about the rich guy in the same chapter when he didn't give away his riches when mm -hmm. Jesus says mm -hmm. and they were all on him they were like oh my goodness we see that's what happened with the riches and I'm like look at the way we do it you just did what the Pharisee did mm -hmm. you pointed and you said I'm not like him but I like what you're saying we're all equal and it's I don't know what is it that makes us make some sins respectable like what is that because the Bible question. That's, that's is clear about those little sins which we call little I think it's because there are some things that we deem as just being just blatantly evil or just yeah. bad. Yeah. And then we say, well, if, like you just said, well, I don't do that. And so it kind of makes us feel like we are higher than, than those people. Yeah. And we don't mean to feel like that, but I think it's almost a human nature kind of thing where we just kind of sit there and say, well, at least, like you said, at least I'm not doing that, or at yes. least I'm not doing this. I don't drink, I want you to know my wife, you know. But we do have our things that we do. You know, we, we are all sinners. And so it's hard because we sit up here, you know, we talk about small sin versus big sin, but it's difficult because and I get into the base sometimes with people I don't feel like, if I tell, I'm, I won't say a white lie, but if there's something that we do, it's hard for me to say, that that's on the same line as somebody who just killed somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard for me to, to to reconcile with that. You know, so that's just something we have to just you know battle and deal with. Yeah, Deborah says we are just in our own eyes according to the Bible. Maybe that's what it is. The uh, Bible does say that, right? Yeah. No, but I I think Troy's point is is appropriate. It, it made me think of Matthew five, the teaching yeah. on anger. You've heard their ancestors were told you must not murder. And that if you commit murder, you're subject to judgment. And th so he's talking to all the Pharisees around, thinking they're all, I'm not like that guy, is what yes. they're saying, right? Yeah. He said, but I say to you, if you're angry with someone, you're subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you're in danger of being brought before the court. And if you <laughs> curse someone, you're in danger of the fires of hell. So what he's saying is, oh, you're all worried about that guy who murdered somebody. You just murdered him in your heart by calling him an idiot. Mm -hmm. But do we feel as convicted and guilty as the murderer when we call somebody an idiot? Yeah. We don't. But that's the point of the gospel. Jesus is saying, even if you think you're good, you still need me. You can't get saved on your own. Yeah. And that's the point. Yeah. Which is why that book is so important, Respectable Sins. Because you and I need to work on our impatience in the checkout line, even though they could do it better. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're doing at those right. checkout lines. Right. And we could fix it. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> in spite of that, we still can't have the thought life of this manager is an idiot, and so is that checkout lady who get, doesn't even know where the barcode is. Well, there's something was shared that I think both of y'all need to. There um, we go. She does this. <laughs> <laughs> at least I'm not alone this time. So somebody was like, oh, I don't like it when people text during service. When we're talking about texting. And then, now keep in mind what you just said about you could do it better because whatever. Um, Marion said, this used to bother me about people texting during service. 
It used to bother me too until I started taking sermon notes on my phone. People asked me why I was texting during service and I showed them my notes. Mm -hmm. Also, if someone texts you about an emergency, what do you do? I suppose they could leave the sanctuary and call back or something. But her point is, you don't know what, y'all don't know. Like while you're saying they don't know what they're doing, you don't know what the managers are faced with or what the issues are. And we do that in life where we're like, I wouldn't do that if I were them or like we'll judge people. Even though you're saying you're wrong to do that, but but it just shows in different applications. Get ready, look at this. He's you ready. don't know, you don't know what the manager he's, at Walmart. No, he's ready. Mm. I bet you you can sit the manager at Walmart right there and he can break it down and be like, I bet you didn't know, boom, 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 and he'll explain the whole thing about why we got two lines. Now let me tell you something. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> no, okay. So, I also mentioned I'm, um, told you that I'm a uh, co-director of music at my church. So I'm up in New Oregon, okay? And <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so my mother, who uh, on the Sundays that she doesn't sing, she's out in the congregation, she's quick to get on me if she sees me pull my phone out. Or if I have it sitting on the bench by me and if I do something like this. Yeah. Now, there have been times where it could have waited, okay? But she doesn't know what the situation is or why I'm being texted or why I'm responding to a text. Take it a step further. How many times we've talked about how you see pastors who up in the pulpit and they'll pull their phone out or whatever their device and start texting on it, but you don't know what it is. It so it's hard. Right. But you say it doesn't make it right. But who's to say that they're not looking at a scripture or something like that or getting some news? You're assuming that it's something that could be that could wait. It could be something that's related to the service because people are using technology. But when you and I've seen pastors all the time who have, uh, at certain churches, pull out their phone or do something, and yeah. then this actually might be a scripture, something that they're looking at, you know? Yeah. But we get so, I think some of our seasoned, um, I use the word seasoned, some of our <laughs> 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 they're sort of stuck in this traditional realm of, you know, well, they should have the Bible out, or they should do this, or they should do that, but things have changed where we're using technology in churches. So you can't assume because somebody pulls out their phone and they're up on the pulpit, that is something that is unnecessary. You can't assume that. You can't assume, but but when I observe, not just him, but other people, and, and you have to think about who you have in your audience, too, and you have a lot of non-believers and et cetera. And when they see texting, and you can kind of tell whether you're texting because you're looking at a Bible scripture or whether you're trying to see if the, the team is leading or whatever, you know, if you're doing something else. And I just think that sometimes we do take it to the extreme and uh, and too often and too frequently and you might see a non-believer out there saying well if they're up there they don't know what you're doing true but they will take it as a non-believer that you are not really focusing in on the spoke uh, uh, on the ministry and on the service you guys right. have had this conversation before <laughs> haven't you yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, what what I could think of would be, there probably have been times when, in the past, before the technology was available, mm -hmm. maybe one of the deacons would come up and whisper in pastor's ear during the song, mm -hmm. or whisper in the music director's ear. Isn't it somewhat similar to send a text instead and maybe less distracting? Mm -hmm. Maybe? I don't know. It's just, I know, for example, I've had my, um, you know, being in church, I've had sometimes, you know, the way our church is arranged, uh, you know, the organ's on one side, the piano's on the other, and then our directress, you know, she's sometimes sitting in the choir. So it's been times when if something, let's say there was a change, you know, we have scripted out what we want to sing, what we want to do, but it's sometimes we have to deviate from that. Mm -hmm. So she may say to me, you know, hey, maybe we should do this before the, you know, after the sermon. But she can't stand up and be like, you know, you know, yell it to me or something like that. or. Excuse me? She's five feet away. She's sitting right there. No, but you still, still, it's, it's sometimes more convenient for her to just pull out her phone and say, let's do, uh, she's keeping it across, and I'll see it. Okay. Discreet. And that's what it's about. You know, so, I, like I said, there has to be a balance. And you can't always assume that it's something that's unnecessary when somebody's sending you a text. I'm not going to dispute that, but I observe more than not people do, doing other than what we are discussing now. There it's is true. some of that. Yeah, there <laughs> no, is. No, that, that does happen, yeah. But I think but, it does. Yeah, but I think we need to kind of get comfortable with that because that's not going anywhere. 
in terms of technology. I know my pastor, when you when he calls a scripture, he'll say, pull out your Bibles or your phones, because mm -hmm. that's what people, some people are doing. So Robert's cheering for Mrs. Wade here. Yes, look, he says, that's always a bad, happens. Yeah, it's always good happens, lady. Yes. I love her. <laughs> tell it. Deborah says, the worship leader did use texting to tell me we were going back up at the end of a, for another song. How else could she do that without disruptions? Mike agrees with Miss Wade and says, but most phone phone use in church is texting. And see, and Mike, you know we love you, brother, but I don't know how you could know that. You know what Lona said? What? <laughs> for people that say most phones, whatever, are, are about texting, he'd be like, well, why are you so busy looking at me? You should be paying attention to the service. <laughs> 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 that is what Lona said. I can just hear him saying that. Like, because it is, it has become a distraction. <laughs> It does, especially in churches where the lights come down. Mm -hmm. That is true. Marion says, I have had people in church text me to agree with the pa with what the pastor is saying. Now, that's funny. I've had times where I... Can you imagine I... a text like, you need to pay attention to this sermon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you texting that. Yes. But I've, I've had times where I'm, I hear something in a message and I want to share it on the, on the radio. Mm -hmm. So I've had times oh, where I take yeah. out my phone, even take a picture of the notes up on the oh, screen. Yeah. And I've done that too. And, and actually... Um, well, there's been a lot of reasons for that. Something I want I don't want to forget for later on. So I'll put my phone and put it down. It goes to the note to the notes app yeah. and put. I've done that too. Yeah. So that goes back to us what I said earlier. You don't know what why the person has the phone out. So I'm just I'm reluctant to be so judgmental as to you know as to it unless it's something that now there are sometimes now I've seen musicians sometimes taken. This is what I don't like when they have their phone. For example, a drummer may have their phone, and you can see it, and they're just constantly doing like this. There are sometimes when it's obvious oh, yeah. that it's unnecessary. And then when everybody can see it, because there's something to be said about, about being discreet. Yes. Okay? And I think that's your mom's point. And that, that's the thing. So you, ha you have to be discreet in what you're doing. You can't be just sitting there on the snare drum, you know, where everybody can see it, and it's so bright, and every, every other beat you're... You can't do that, <laughs> and I've seen that. You see, Bruce. Bruce is like, I agree with with Miss Wade as well. Christopher says I use my phone for the Bible, and he says easy to take notes and listen. Eva says my pastor tells us to take a picture of the screen. Well, but that, but see, then that's not distracting because he's given permission to do it. Ultimately, do you see what I mean? Yeah. But I'm I'm still with you on the balance part of it. You're right that there are times when it's obviously not paying attention. Like but I think there can be times when it's really not tangibly different than whispering in the pastor's ear or yeah. like it's not that different. I was going to say when you said it's obvious, sometimes it's obvious. Wendy says, I've observed someone shopping on Amazon during church. Well, maybe they got to buy the book the pastor's talking about. <laughs> 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 Look at you. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Are you playing B3 in church? Is that what you're doing? Yes. Oh. Pastor Dale. We need we need a B three in the studio. B three. Hammond B three. She doesn't know. Actually, we have we actually have an RT, which is the same thing. Hammond RT. So it's the bigger work. It's what you need in church. It's that without an organ like that, you're not. You don't even do in church. Oh yeah, I know my church. We need someone doing that while I'm talking. When it gets heated, when it gets going, you can. That's what he does. Yeah. Oh, that's tight. You gotta have good time to do that. Pastor Daryl Harris is on. Oh. Yeah. Better shape up. <laughs> oh yeah, Marion says no judgment, no assuming. People do what they have to do. God knows our hearts. But I, I also want to go back to your question though about we're talking all this about patience and waiting is is the kind of underlying current. You were asking about if we sat down with the manager at the Walmart Thank where you. it's all messed up. Yeah. What would we say to them? We don't. I would know tell you while you're walking around like I could do this, but do the, the, you don't know what they're going through. There is a distinct line between circumstances out of your control and competence. Okay, give me no. Break, break that <laughs> like, down. Like what, what I would tell you is there are certain stores where the manager is super competent and you know from experience, the place runs like clockwork. And you go in one yeah. day and there's an off day, you assume, oh my goodness, obviously six people called in sick, all these problems. And there are stores where quite literally somebody is incompetent. So you're and telling incompetence me all of doesn't Walmart. Now listen, I know you're like, oh, because Aldi's this, Aldi whatever. Aldi and Walmart, two different categories, classes, mm -hmm. everything. So Walmart, you're telling me all Walmart managers are incompetent. No, I'm not saying that at all. I've been to Walmarts that are doing it. They tend to do that. Like, come on, let's just be honest. They got a problem with lines and the amount of cash. Like, they got issues. Well, but see, it's also an issue of 
uh, professionalism and training. Because, for example, <laughs> I've been to a ton yeah, of different yeah, yeah. Um, fast food restaurants, particularly in Chicago. People are so rude. And yet Chick-fil-A, wherever I go in the country, yeah. mm -hmm. people are not rude. Right. And this isn't an issue of their Christian faith necessarily. It's proper training, customer exactly. service, or competence. Efficient. I went to Chick-fil-A. Oh, my goodness. It was long, the line. And they had a guy outside taking orders. And I'm like, what a way to deal yes. with, a, with mm -hmm. a packed day. You know, you won't see that at Burger King. You are going to stay there in line for 20 minutes. But... but just to be, because I don't want you to get out of this one. You can't, don't compare to Chick fil A. You see what she does? <laughs> no, you see what Walmart. She does? Do you accept the fact that there's a possibility that a Walmart manager could tell you, listen, this is a different animal? This is the issues we deal with. This is Walmart. You I can't can. compare them to nobody. I can, if you can accept the fact that sometimes disorder is a result of incompetent leadership. Okay. So then that has to be at the top level. It can't be a local Walmart. It's always at the top. With any organization, it starts at the top. It starts at the top. So at the top. Everything funnels down. Okay. But see, what I'm trying to figure out is, do we have license then to work on our patients and stand in a long line and not be upset and still say to ourselves, I'm in a long line. I'm not going to I'm not going to sin here, but I'm in this long line because they don't know what they're doing. Sometimes what you have to do, though, and we don't often do that, we stand up there and we complain. I call it conversations like in the parking lot. Do we take time to go to the management and say, you know, I've been waiting in this line. I come in this store all the time. This is what occurs. Uh, is there something you can do about this? I noticed this. I noticed that. We don't do this because True. how can management make effective changes or make changes Amen. if they are not made aware of the situation? I like that. That's, That's how a good point. change happens. If we are all like, well, I'm going to be a Christian, just stand in line, things won't change. So, But is it sinful for us smart. to I'm acknowledge? I'm on her team. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but, but you, you know what I'm saying? Like, can we work on our patients internally and externally yes. Yes. In, in the long line? And still acknowledge incompetence without sinning. Like, yes. is it sinful to go, th this is disorganized and a disaster? N no. A bad customer I service. Know. I don't no. think so. Because, uh, uh, I hope I'm, even Paul talks, you know, Paul talks about, I think somewhere in Corinthians, he talks about when you see something wrong, and then there's a method, there's a procedure in which you uh, go about to uh, rectify it or to bring it to the attention. And there's like, A, you do this, B, you do this. I'm making it short, but, mm -hmm. you know. And then if it doesn't work, then you such and such a thing. So there's a, a system, there's a procedure. And I think that works anywhere with anything. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. basically we're right. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Well, I mean, come on. We're working on it. We're wow. impatient. It's fine. Wow. But they don't know what they're doing. So we got two teachers here. <laughs> well, that's good. Three. Oh yeah, three teachers. Well, four. Well, You're homeschooled. I'm a homeschooler. Yeah. Yay. No wonder it was such a great overtime today. <laughs> this is good. I know. We is. love your input. Jennifer, what's up? Tony says, Happy New Year. There's somebody else that we don't see a lot of uh, commenting saying Happy New Year. A lot of new people. David, David Lee? hello. There was a new person, Mike. Uh, I think Robert Maris needs to doesn't cheer for comment us. often. Here it is. Sus Susan. We don't see you commenting often. Happy hey, New Year, Susan. And Annette, hi Annette. She's with Toastmaster. She's sharp. Um, Eva says she agrees with Len. My, uh, don't tell Len that. No, he, <laughs> he doesn't, doesn't need to hear that. <laughs> you could just see Len. That's right. Jen, uh, Sarah says honestly, even without our phones, how many people stay 100% focused in the sermon 100% of the time? Even without my phone, I sometimes make a shopping list, either written or mentally. And I and I am the pastor's wife. Oh! Uh, wow. Sometimes it's wow. helpful to just wow. write it down and get it out of my mind, <laughs> whether on paper or on the phone. She has to listen to him all the time. She, oh, she gets a little bit of a She may have heard of someone already. That's right. That's <laughs> so. hilarious. Well, we better go. But we got a spe special thanks to Mrs. Wade Thank and you. to Roy yeah, for being with us today. So Thank, you for us. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank you. Truly a pleasure. Glad you guys are here. Hope more of you have come on the other side of the camera at some point. Yeah, come We'd visit us. You don't have to bring a thing unless you talk to Brian. Oh, and uh, by, by the way, quick comment. Robert does cheer for me. No, Br Rob, no. <laughs> no, that doesn't count. I'm not going to read the second half of his. I'm just going to read the first half. <laughs> we love you, Robert. Good to see you, brother. Oh, goodness. All right, we got to get out of here. Guys. God bless you. Special thanks to our friends. Thanks, you guys, for oh, coming yes. in. Thank oh, you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. God bless you.